There was a landmark judgment that was passed by the High Court of Kerala early this week. The court reunited two young women, Adila Nazreen and Fatima Noura, through a historic verdict and allowed them to live together. Adila and Fatima were in a relationship since their school days in Saudi Arabia. Later, when the families found out that they both wanted to live together, they strongly opposed their relationship and allegedly abused them physically. On 19th of May, the couple decided to elope and seek shelter at Vanaja Collective, an organization which is engaged in supporting the community and other marginalized groups. On 24th of May, Fatima's parents came and took Fatima away under false pretenses and were planning to send her off to Saudi Arabia again and marry her off against her will. Adila had filed a habeas corpus petition alleging that Fatima's parents had abducted her and forced her into a conversion therapy. The court, after hearing both the girls, passed the judgment allowing them to live together. Also, June is celebrated as Pride Month across the world and this is the best gift to mark the occasion. There has been a lot of discussion on social media since the news came out. There were arguments for and against homosexuality. Much of the hype has been due to both the girls being from the Muslim community which has strong convictions against homosexuality. Many people still see homosexuality as a mental illness, as seriously lacking a good beating and a bad upbringing. They think this illness can be corrected like any other psychological disorders. Homosexuals are considered as an evil to the society and also the butt of many a joke. The majority of the society have an incorrect notion about homosexuality. This is what I will attempt to educate in today's video using science of course. Welcome to Pale Blue Thoughts, the channel which promotes scientific temper and criticizes pseudoscience. When a baby is born, the sex of the baby is determined by the genitals it has. Scientifically speaking, a person with XX chromosome is a woman and a person with XY chromosome is a man. This is generally true 99.99% of the time, but very rarely there are differences. In fact, it is not the chromosome that determines these things. It is the genes within the chromosomes that determines sexuality. SRY gene is a gene commonly found in the Y chromosome. The function of this gene is to awaken another dormant gene called SOX9. When this gene is awakened, its job is to remove any female traits on the other X chromosome. But in some very rare cases, the SRY gene of someone within the XY chromosome is not awakened. In such an event, even if the chromosome is XY, it does not receive instructions for making genitals. As a result, the female characteristics of the X chromosome become dominant. In short, if the SRY gene is not awakened or the SOX9 gene cannot be awakened, even if the male-specific XY chromosome is present, the baby will be born with the female sex organ. There is a process called crossing over during cell division. That is, the genetic parts are exchanged with each other. If this happens, then the said SRY gene can cross over to the X chromosome. The SRY gene can then be passed on to a person with the XX chromosome. When that gene is awakened and activated, the XOX9 gene is stimulated and as a result, the male sex organs are formed. That is, a child born as XX or female will have male genitalia. Now, the rate of activities of genes can also affect the masculinity or femininity in a person. Even if the male has a male sexual organ but does not produce hormones accordingly, the male will not have any feelings towards a female. Rather, if more female hormone is produced as a result of other genes, the male may be interested in another male. That is, the formation of the sexual organs can take place in one way and the formation of the male and female in the brain can occur in another way. The distribution of neurons in the brain in the hypothalamus, amygdala, hippocampus and brainstem are different in males and females. That is, although the body has a male sex organ, the brain may belong to the female. On the other hand, Although the body has a female sexual organ, the brain may be male. The difference in the brain neurons can cause a female to have an affinity with another female or a male with another male. If you are a heterosexual person, have you ever felt sexual interest in a person of the opposite sex? If the answer is yes, then it is because you have such a wiring in your brain. You cannot change it. This is very similar to how we perceive left-handedness in humans. The majority of humans are right-handed and all our day-to-day -day things have been designed for them. But there exists a small minority for whom their dominant hand is their left. And they don't choose it that way. It just happened. Would you discriminate them on the basis of that and try to counsel them or harass them to follow your way of doing things? Would you consider them a social outcast 
or would you help them to adapt to their natural style and how do you consider people who are born with disabilities would you shun them or help them adjust to a normal lifestyle as possible by providing them with support there are many other reasons for homosexuality even siblings born before you can be a factor that is some of the proteins or hormones that are produced in the mother's body against some of the proteins that make up the embryo may continue to lie in the mother's womb and may be manifested in the next fetus before you curse a homosexual for having been born in your womb think for a moment that it is not that he or she has been born in that womb but it was your womb that made him or her and when you say you have a brother or sister like this to embarrass me remember it could have been because some of the hormones that you left behind that made them so it is your duty to show them a little compassion love and acceptance of their existence now to counter the arguments posed by people who openly propose homophobia i have a few questions have you ever felt that craving for sex is a mental illness no right other human beings are also like that their brains were not shaped by what they wanted just like you have a sexual feelings for women if you are a man or vice versa so does a lesbian woman or a gay man develop a sexual interest for another woman or man that choice is determined by the hormones on which they have no choice what is your problem if two human beings enjoy their lives in their privacy with their mutual consent now i vote to the people who forbade it for religious reasons if you believe that your god created all human beings are you ready to accept that your god made some mistakes in his creation and then is he trying to cover up his mistake by asking you to harass and downgrade his creation or to kill them if given a chance what sort of benevolence is that now this is what happens in cases where religion forbids expressing their real sexual feelings they end up marrying a person from the opposite sex who knows nothing about their condition being unable to control their urges they would go in search of another person of their own sex here the third person may be a heterosexual who doesn't have similar feelings towards the opposite sex and they would end up getting abused against their will and that trauma may never leave them for the rest of their lives here three lives are ruined their own life the life of their partner in marriage and the life of another child or another person who gets sexually abused but as society started to develop better moral values as a result of their better understanding of science and through that the actual reality they have started to realize that they should behave more humanly with homosexuals that is why progressive societies allow them to live according to their will and preferences but what stands against this is a lack of understanding about why people get attracted to the same sex this gets misconstrued as a problem that homosexuals willfully create and is interpreted as a matter of their choice which in most cases it isn't add to that the superstitions and religiosity that dictates this as a sin causes such minorities to be harassed and tortured the majority of the homosexuals are forced to live their lives inside the closet unable to openly declare their preferences there has been many who have dared to come out of the closets and also make a mark in the world some of them include singer elton john famous skeptic and pseudoscience buster james randy one of the most widely read authors yuval noah harari apple ceo tim cook are some of those who have expressed their sexuality openly and yet continue to leave a mark of their own in our history so what about india Indian history has a different story to tell. Hinduism acknowledges the third gender and there are certain characters in the Mahabharata such as Shikandi who was born as a female but identifies as a male. The Kama Sutra describes gay, lesbians, bisexuals, transgender and intersex people. The Sushruta Samhita states that homosexuality is unchangeable and forbid homosexuals from marrying a partner of the opposite sex. Of course, as with everything else, both Sushruta and Charaka gets the reasons wrong as both describe that homosexuals are conceived when the father's semen is less and transgender people are conceived when the intercourse happens with the woman on top position. The Khajuraho temples famous for their erotic sculptures contain several depictions of homosexual activity. Historians have long argued that pre-colonial Indian society did not criminalize same-sex relationships nor did it view such relations as immoral or sinful. but many are of the consensus that although its existence was acknowledged it was not approved as with anything else we indians like to cherry pick from our history too with what agrees with the confirmation biases so we just ignore these things about our past so how far have we progressed in recent times lgbt rights in india have been evolving rapidly in recent years however indian lgbt citizens still face social and legal difficulties in this country 
In 2018, in the landmark decision of Navdeet Singh Johar versus the Union of India, the Supreme Court of India decriminalized consensual homosexual intercourse by terming the Section 377 of the Indian Penal Code as unconstitutional. Furthermore, it ruled that any discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation or gender identity is a violation of the Indian Constitution. In 2014, the Indian Psychiatric Society issued a statement in which it stated that there is no evidence to prove that homosexuality is unnatural. Based on the existing scientific evidence and good practice guidelines from the field of psychiatry, the Indian Psychiatric Society would like to state that there is no evidence to substantiate the belief that homosexuality is a mental illness or a disease. In 2018, the society reiterated its stance on homosexuality saying, certain people are not cut out to be heterosexual and we don't need to castigate them, we don't need to punish them, to ostracize them. Despite all efforts by the judiciary and psychiatrists, conversion therapies are still performed in India. These practices usually involve electroconvulsive therapy, hypnosis, the administration of nausea inducing drugs or more commonly talk therapy where the individual is told how sinful homosexuality is. Conversion therapy can lead to depression, anxiety, memory loss, seizures, drug use and suicidal tendencies for the individuals involved. In fact, many have succumbed to such practices in India already or because they were unable to cope with the pressure of being a social outcast. All said and done, India currently does not recognize same-sex marriage or civil unions whereas more than 30 countries across the world allow it. But that hasn't stopped people from the same sex from getting married and that has been happening in India. There have also been a couple of high-profile celebrity same-sex civil partnerships such as the civil union of designer Wendell Rodericks with his French partner Jerome Merrill conducted under French law in Goa in 2002 and the more recent wedding of Katrina Kaif's makeup artist Daniel C. Bohr who married Tyrone Braganza in 2019. The event was widely covered in the media and Katrina had attended the celebrations in Goa and danced to Afghan Jalebi with the gay couple. Their marriage also appeared in a documentary series called Big Day, released by Netflix. A lot of brands too have openly supported the LGBTQ rights like Zomato, Netflix, Uber India, Britannia, Indigo, Nika, L'Oreal, Swiggy, KFC, Bima, Mintra and Fast Track to name a few. Another brand that I have noticed that really goes out for the rights of the LGBTQ community is the handloom brand Suta Bombay. They make ads and Instagram posts which truly capture the essence of being a homosexual and they do it with a lot of pride, literally. These brands go out of the way to support what is right even though these could damage their reputation and decrease their fan bases. But despite strong political movements in favor of LGBTQ rights, the constitution and the judiciary supporting the rights of the LGBTQ community, there remains a significant amount of homophobia present among the Indian population. Hopefully, as more and more people come out of their closets like Adila and Fatima and with more people getting into their thick heads that this is not something that needs to be condemned, attitudes towards these minorities would change and we would start to accept them just like we have started accepting and helping out people with disabilities. So dear friends, homosexuality is not a serious sin nor it is something to be ridiculed. You may have said so out of ignorance at times but if you do not stand up for their human rights despite knowing the truth about their nature then that means that there is a homophobic criminal dormant within you. They are human too. They too have the right to live on this earth and enjoy everything that you enjoy. They are similar to you in almost all the ways. They are just wired differently. That is not their fault. Let them be as long as they are not harming anyone else. To all the LGBTQIA plus people out there, Pale Blue Thoughts would like to wish you a happy Pride Month. I hope this episode cleared some misconceptions that you may have had about human sexuality. Please share this video so that this message reaches more people and they get cleared of their misconceptions and enable them to treat every human with equality and dignity irrespective of their sexual orientation, gender or sexual preferences. I am reminded of a dialogue from the movie Traffic. If you say no, nothing will happen here. Today will be like any other day. But your one yes can make history that will enable a lot of people have the courage to say yes tomorrow. So I say yes to gay pride even though I am a heterosexual. I say yes to give humble support to their rights to live a life with dignity like any other human being. You can say no by not sharing this video or by not supporting them. Nothing would happen. But if you say yes, you will be part of history. I hope you like this video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. 
I shall be back with more science-based videos. Until then, it's bye-bye from Pale Blue Thoughts.